What's going on everybody? It's Carmine from Barmine Tech and today we're going to be talking about the Jet KVM. So I do want to start off and I want to thank Jet KVM for sending one of their KVMs over for me to work with. So as you know, I've already worked with the Jet KVM. It's already a product that I've used in the past, I've recommended. But today we're going to talk about it a little bit more now that I have much more experience with it. So like I said, today we're going to talk about the Jet KVM. We're going to talk about its features. We'll talk about some of the software on it. We'll talk about some of its use cases. And we'll kind of wrap up my thoughts on the Jet KVM altogether. To start off, you're going to receive your Jet KVM. It's going to come in a very nice box, very packaged nicely. And you would just pull it out. And you can see this is how your Jet KVM will arrive. So down here you have the Jet KVM. And up here will be your wires and the QR code access, you know, if you need some instructions or anything. Inside the packaging, you're going to receive three cables. You're going to receive USB to USB-C. This is what's going to connect the Jet KVM to your system and receive power. You're going to have HDMI to mini HDMI. And then there's going to be a USB-C splitter. I haven't really messed with that one too much. I've more used the two others for video and power. This is the Jet KVM itself. Hopefully there's not too much of a glare. It's a very sleek little unit. It's made out of all, I want to say aluminum or some sort of other metal product. You can see over here on the back, we have an RJ45, which would be how we connect the network. And then over here we have an RJ11. This would be used for some of their connectors that you can get separately, such as a serial connection and some of the other ones. So you can get like a serial connection to maybe an older system that has it. Underneath it, we have the mini HDMI connection and the mini USB connection. That would be again, how we power up the device and connect it and how we get video output to it. The steps to getting this set up are very simple. You just need to plug in the network over here. You can plug in your video feed to the back of any of the machines you're trying to work with, and then you're gonna plug in the USB to a USB port so it gets power. You can set up PoE. I don't know if it's fully supported yet or if it's just kind of like a workaround for the time being. You could look into it if you're interested, but being that it just runs off of USB is very simple to do. I'm gonna get this one cabled up and we'll go through a quick setup process. I just cabled up the Jet KVM over to one of my Mac minis in my Mac mini cluster. It just came up with an IP. On the actual display that we were just looking at before, it comes up and it tells you the IP address of the actual device, and that's how you would connect to it. So I'm gonna open up a browser and we're gonna go over to the Jet KVM. So mine said it came up at 159, and you can see here's the welcome screen that we get. So we're just gonna set this up really quickly. I'm gonna do it without a password right now, but you can do it with a password. And you can see it actually is plugged into one of my systems already. So we are all ready to go if we want to. Of course, one of the first things we're gonna to wanna to do is come over to settings, appearance, and we're gonna change this over to dark mode. Another thing we're gonna to wanna to check out is the updates over here on the general tab. I like to uncheck auto update on these just in case a update does come out and it might be a little bit buggy. And you do need this system for, you know, day to day to work. So you can update this over here if you're interested. I'm gonna do that later. Other than that, it's pretty straightforward. We have a bare bones access into my machine. So the idea of this is, is that if the operating system crashes, let's say on this Proxmox host, and I no longer can get a virtual shell through Proxmox with the Jet KVM connected, I have a bare bones computer access to the actual machine instead of having to depend on the operating system to get into it. So it's pretty much like having an SSH session without having to rely on the SSH session to be able to come up. So you can see over here, I'm just, I'm right in the machine. It helps if I use the right login, but you can see over here, like I'm, I'm in my Mac mini cluster. I can run commands through here and we could do everything that we might need to do right through this system. I actually had a scenario where the Jet KVM came in super handy about a week or so ago where I got a notification from Uptime Kuma that everything on my main Proxmox server went down but my host still showed up. I was able to get into it. I was able to do everything, but in the web GUI it showed down. But on my Jet KVM, I was able to still be able to get it through console. I determined that the network drivers crashed and I was able to reboot it straight through the Jet KVM instead of having to put a monitor on it or plug a KVM into the back of it, pull it out of my rack and go through the whole process. This is where having the Jet KVM comes in super handy. Some additional features we can get is if you need, you can use a virtual keyboard. You can initiate wake on LAN if it's available in your network. So if you have devices that you need to wake on LAN and they're configured to do that, you can. You can also push virtual media right through the Jet KVM. This is similar to other devices that we've talked about, but if you're configuring a new device, let's say a new server, a new computer, whatever it might be, you can actually come over here and you can mount an operating system or a file package that you might need right through here. So like they have some experimental ones, but let's say if we want to mount it right from our storage, 
we can do so. I can upload a new package, let's say. So let's say I want to work on maybe making a new system. I need TrueNAS scale. I can upload my ISO right through here and it would mount as a drive on that machine or I could put it as a CD if I need and we can work with it right from there. So this is another way that the JetKVM can come very handy as a deployment tool, so you don't have to keep getting up and down and connecting a monitor, and you don't have to connect the USB drive and have everything else. You could just go right through here and do it all in one shot. There's also a paste to text option, so if you do need to maybe push a command, it's not going through properly, you don't have a keyboard, you could do it right through there. They do have extension cards, which we'll talk about in a few minutes. I don't have any of them right now, but we'll go over to the website and we'll discuss that in a little bit. You can see over here your connection status, and then there's just the settings if you wanted to go through here and mess with any of them. This is pretty much the whole concept of the Jet KVM. Like I said, it's a nice little package to be able to administer your systems, whether you're at work, let's say, and something breaks and you need to get back in to fix something. Maybe you don't have extra monitors and you won't want to get onto your server and see what happened. This is just a nice little device that you can plug right in and get some access right to your server bare bones. If you remember, I did this in the past where I paired this up with the EZQ switch and I was able to actually break it out to multiple devices. I'm able to access everything in my rack through this one KVM using an EZQ KVM switch. So you can see I have these macros up here that will switch through the actual switch itself and I can get access to different devices. So you can see now I'm on Barmine Tech. I can switch over to mini backups and then I can come over here to my actual mini lab server. So now this is where everything would come in that if let's say I have something happen on one of my machines, I can just hop into my KVM and I can access it through here. I don't have anything on KVM for you, so that's why we're not gonna go there. But it's a similar idea as what we were just talking about, and I have full access to all the machines in my rack. Now, you might be saying to yourself, do I really need to use this device in my home lab or my house or whatever it might be? And the answer is no. Of course, you can go over and you can connect a monitor and keyboard, and you can get onto your system and troubleshoot it or do whatever you might need to do that way. The idea of this is it's gonna make it easier to remotely manage those devices. Maybe you put your whole lab into your garage, and your garage is three rooms away, and you, know, you don't wanna have to keep going back and forth changing the config on the actual system itself you want to do it right through the remote session on the jet kvm this is where it makes it a lot easier i'll give you another example let's say you're a it guy you have a server that you're supporting for a client they are three states away the os just went down it's not a like full server with hpe ilo or it doesn't have dell idrac or maybe it doesn't have a super micros ipmi and you need to get back into that machine to reboot it and now you have no access this is where the Jet KVM can really come into play. We'll talk a little bit more about the remote connection to it in a few minutes. Maybe you have a whole bunch of equipment, or maybe your job does, and you're going to co-locate it at a data center. You need to remotely manage those machines. Again, this is where the Jet KVM will come into play. If we come over to their website, there is some stuff we can see over here. We can get the purchase link, which will bring us to the different options. So over here, we do have the Jet KVM, which we can purchase from resellers. And we do have these expansion cards that we were mentioning before. Over here we have an ATX extension board. These boards are typically used to be able to actually push the power functions and some of the other ATX functions to the machine. So if you need to be able to trigger a reset or a soft reboot, you could do so through here. We have a DC power control extension. Again, this is just going to be a power control board which would be the add-on to the Jet KVM. And then we have the serial cable extension, which will just work with the serial console as an add-on card. But if we come over to documentation, we can come over to the remote access, which we were just kind of hitting on before. So we can enable remote access through the settings and we can do it through TailScale and Cloudflare and they have a bunch of diagrams about it. It's not something that I've done in the past, but we can come over here and you can set up remote access. They also do offer a Jet KVM Cloud Security where you can set up a custom one if you're interested yourself. You could read through the documentation. Of course, I do recommend very much so that if you are going to make this Jet KVM accessible over the internet, that you ensure it's locked down and only you're gonna be able to access it or people that need to access it since it will have direct access to any machine that it is connected to. Remember, security is really important and when it comes to stuff like this, you don't wanna backdoor your server to everybody in the world by mistake. A big thing about the Jack KVM and why it was very popular is the entire software is available on GitHub. It is an open source software. 
and the community is working actively on it to improve it as they go. If you are a programmer and you are interested, you can come scroll through here and you can contribute to the GitHub if you are interested to the software and we might be able to see it in one of the future updates. One last thing to talk about, we come back over here to the product page and we can come over here to purchase it from a reseller. We were able to purchase the Jet Key VM for $89.99 and this is going to be in US dollars. If you are a different currency, it will probably be a little bit different. We have the availability to get the ATX extension board. It looks like about another $20. And if you want the DC power control, it's the same thing. Again, this is from a reseller. I can't speak for them because I haven't worked with a reseller. I originally got mine through the Kickstarter in the beginning. But if you are interested in checking one of these out and getting one for yourself, I'll put a link down below and you can come over here to the Jet Key VM site. And purchase one from one of the resellers as you'd like so that is the jet kvm like i said i really do enjoy working with this product i've used a couple of kvms over the years this one's been very simple and it works very smoothly every time i had a couple of hiccups in the past with it which i believe were resolved through software updates that the keyboard would kind of like stick and it would just keep typing keys until it errored out that was really frustrating because i'm trying to configure a server and it just keeps entering whatever key I just pressed a thousand times. I haven't seen it happen recently, so like I said, I want to say it was resolved by our software update. But these Jack KVMs have been working very smoothly for me. I've, like I said, I had it rack mounted up with my EasyQ switch, and it's been working very well to do all the work I need to get done on these servers I have in my rack. The community, being that it's open source and that it's fully available, has been great to continue to further develop it. Like I said, they are working on updates as well as 3D models. So if you are somebody who 3D prints or you have have access to one you can have 3d printed files for racks to hold your jet kvm or to hold your jet kvm in the easy coup switch or whatever you might want to be doing so you can look online at some of those files and you could do stuff like that again i want to thank jet kvm for sending this device over for me to work with i really do like this product as a whole and i would recommend to check one out if you are interested in getting a kvm for your home lab your network or whatever you might need it for i want to thank you all for watching as always i'll have links to all the gear in my home lab down below I'll have a link to the Jet KVM site if you want to read up and get one for yourself. I'll have a link to the Discord server down below as well. Again, I want to thank you all for watching. I'll see you in the next video. And as my buddy Don would say, hack till it hurts.